Hi, I'm Josh, a co-founder of Woodland Mills, and this is our full-length product video of our Multilander off-road trailer. We use the word multi in its name because of the numerous configurations it can be put in to help you get tasks done around your farm and property. In these full-length product videos, we like to touch on the product size and weight and the way we ship it. And then we're gonna go into the assembly process. And then we're gonna follow that up with the part that I like the most, which is a detailed product walkthrough as we go through every item on the trailer and show you the various configurations and how they're gonna work. So we wanna start with the crate that it's shipped in. So this is the crate. This is an iron crate with a cardboard sleeve over it. It's 88 inches in length, 31 inches in depth, and 25 inches high. The shipping weight is 826 pounds, and the product weight within it is 685 pounds. So because of its size and weight, it's gonna come on a transport truck. Where available, we're gonna have a lift gate to bring that down to the ground for a curbside delivery. From being in this crate to getting to a fully assembled trailer, you're looking at between two and three hours with common hand tools. We provide a very detailed manual. You're gonna go page by page and get this trailer assembled from everything here in the crate. For the full product walk around, I like to start right here at the front and we'll work our way all the way through the Multilander, looking at all the details that bring the Multilander together as the trailer that it is. So we have a two inch ball coupler here at the front. It's 360 degrees rotatable. And this decouples the trailer's rotation from the tow vehicle's rotation 100%. So when you're off-road, you don't have to worry about the, the tow vehicle or the trailer influencing each other. The tongue itself, can be flipped 180 degrees. And what that does is it changes the height of the tow vehicle requirement. So you wanna to tow the Multilander as level as possible with your tow vehicle. By using the tongue and its rotation, you can set that up for a lower ATV or a higher UTV or a tractor. We've got a tongue jack. It's 360 degrees rotatable, but it's got locking locates at 90 degrees. And we've got a nice removable handle, which we designed so it stays where you need it, when you need it, right here on the tongue, but it doesn't hang down and get in the way when the trailer's in use. As we move further back, we're gonna see our twin rail laminated chassis. So we've got two and a half inch tube, front to back, both left and right, and then we've got quarter inch thick plates that we've laser cut and laminated around those two and a half inch frame rails to build the chassis that supports the box. This also gave us space to fit our boom in our winch assembly for storage and for use when you're using it as a dump trailer. Now I wanna come around and talk about what the Multilander rolls on. So we've got four tires, 22 by 11 on 10 inch rims. These are powder coated gray with our valve stem protectors. We've got them on packed tapered roller bearings. And then we have a Zerk fitting on the, on the rear that's protected inside the rim for ease of maintenance. These are bolted to a walking beam assembly and the walking beam carries that load up to our axle beam and then that bolts in to the twin rail chassis and brings that load from the box down into the wheels. Now the walking beam is important when you're using things off-road because it, it really softens the impact on the tow vehicle as you encounter obstacles and try and climb up over them. The walking beam effectively cuts that amount the trailer has to rise and lower in half by letting the wheels walk over the load in, or the obstacle independently. Now I wanna lower the box and show you the various configurations.
you'll see we have an area here for a locking pin. And this is gonna lock the utility box down to the chassis. Obviously, for the dump configuration, we don't want it locked. So we're gonna store it here on our winch brace. This is also a good reminder that the winch brace needs to be in place when using it as a dump box. So we've got our winch brace, our winch is installed, and then this is our boom. And now this boom is telescopic. And what that lets us do is change the dump angle. So when it's maximum position, we have a 50 degree dump angle on the box. Here in the lower position, you're gonna have varying degrees uh, depending on which, which pin location you put it in. You see we have a nylon roller here and a quick release fair lead for the rope. We're gonna click the winch into a lock. You're also gonna see that this is a rotating boom. So as I'm raising this, you'll see the boom's gonna rotate closer and closer to the trailer. And that keeps the load on the rope as vertical as possible. It doesn't let us side load the box or the boom and makes the winching as efficient as possible for dumping the utility box. The telescopic boom combined with the rotation gives us those maximum dump angles. That's only available with that rotating boom. The utility box has a capacity of 1.2 cubic yards. It measures 80 inches in length and 44 inches in width. And I wanna start and show you the frame underneath and how we've built it up. Underneath, we used full length, two and a half inch by two and a half inch L rail, front to back, coupled with three structural steel ribs that take this support and bring it up to the upper deck of the trailer and gives us all the mounting points we need for the unique functions of the multi-lander. As these come down, we've got them resting on rubber bumpers here on the chassis and that isolates noise and vibration when you're towing it around. Now I'm gonna lower the box and I'll show you the various configurations of the utility box itself. Now I wanna talk about the tailgates. So both front and rear tailgates are removable. That's gonna allow you to put longer loads on the trailer. They're also top rotatable. So both tailgates ride on a large machine pin that drops down from the top. We've used stainless steel draw latches installed on a slight angle to draw it into the pin and keep it snug. You'll see, while using it as a dump trailer, you can leave the tailgates on and your material can slide out under the top rotation with ease. With the tailgates removed, I can now show you the lift and lock foldable side panels. You'll see we've again used a rubber bumper to isolate vibration and protect the powder coated surfaces. We also have a stake and machined pocket. So we've machined this pocket into a large block of metal. And then we have a half inch by half inch stake that gives us the support we need when they're locked down in place. With both sides down, you're gonna see the, the unique feature of being able to put, let's say a large sheet of plywood on here and use it as a mobile work surface. 
It may help with objects you're loading, depending on the size, the weight, and where you want to position them. We also have a configuration where we're going to be able to load larger logs from the side, left or right of this trailer, by using these foldable sides in conjunction with the supplied log loading ramps. And I'll show you that configuration next. To set up for this configuration, I'm going to need to get my first log ramp out, which is stowed just under here. We've got pins front and back. And then it slides out. We also have a storage position here for the pin required to lock it in. So from here, you can install the first ramp. And secure it in place. Now the second ramp, we've reused the boom. So we just have to take the pulley off of it. And again, we have a storage spot for this right here. With this locked in place, we can now have a look at the terrain and see if we need to telescope this ramp in or out to get this level for when we go to roll that log up. You'll see we have key stock welded here along the ramps, and this is gonna help that log roll because we wanna be rolling the log up, not just dragging it up. I'll show you how it telescopes. Lots of flexibility in the ramp length. Now I wanna grab a log and I'll show you how we roll it up with the winch and the rope. So we've gone ahead and brought in the log. This is a cherry log. It's about eight feet in length and about 18 inches in diameter. So this is gonna be around the cap for the log size that we recommend using at around a thousand pounds uh, for this configuration with the ramps. Now I gotta take the winch and get it installed on the opposite side. So the winch comes out and then I have a spot To reinstall the winch, on the opposing side of the ramps, and now we're going to take, take our rope and we're going to go over the log to promote rolling it up the ramps. And then we're gonna bring the hook under. We gotta bring this right back. We slide it under the side panel. And we lock it into the rear of the winch post. Now we've made an effort to center the rope on the log. If the log is heavier to one end, you can bring the rope slightly closer to the heavy end, and that'll keep it balanced as you roll it up the ramps.
Now this is where I pause and I decide how I'm gonna get this log off the trailer before I take it the next step and actually bring it into the utility box. From here, I could either put some blocking in here to prevent the log from dropping way down into the box. That's if I plan on rolling it back out of the box. We could also take this, if the log's short enough, and reinstall the boom, and then I can use that boom to dump the utility box and push the, push the log out the rear. So at this point, I'm gonna put some blocking in and then I'll bring the log into the trailer. So I grab some blocking here, and this is gonna prevent that log from dropping right down to the lower deck. I'm gonna keep it kind of midway. Now that I've shown how to use the ramps and the side panel to bring that log up, and we've got it nested here in the lower part of the trailer, I just wanna talk about our options for getting this log off. So we mentioned putting that blocking in, and that keeps the log raised up a bit, so I could use a cant hook to help me get it back up on the side panel, and then I could just use the winch process in reverse and lower it back down to the ground. If I was bringing this up to my sawmill, whether it was raised or ground mounted, I'd be able to use that function. If it's, the sawmill is high enough, I could just roll it straight onto the deck. Uh, because of the length of the log and where it fell, it left me room to reinstall the boom. So with a log this length, positioned this way, I'm also gonna be able to put that boom back in, put the winch kit back on, and I'll be able to just dump the utility box and dump the log off as I pull forward. I'm gonna now put the winch back in, I'll put the boom back in, and I'll show you how to start raising that up. So we can reinstall the winch at the front. Reinstall our winch brace. And now we'll go take the ramps back out. And reinstall the boom. Now with the boom reinstalled, we can again put on our pulley. And reroute our cable. And I want to get the other ramp stowed and the side locked in before I attempt to lift it. With the ramp stowed and the winch and boom configured, I wanna make sure that I've removed the locking pin. Having that locking pin in while you're loading the log up the ramps is important, but obviously for dumping the log, we want that removed and stowed. Now I'm not actually gonna dump this log entirely. I don't have a tow vehicle on, and as this log slides down, it's gonna put a tail weight instead of a tongue weight. Um, but yeah, the idea is you put it on an angle and then you could pull forward once the log tail touches or the log will start to slide and then you pull forward with your tow vehicle and leave the log on the ground. As an example,
Now that I've shown you how to get the log up the ramps and into the trailer, and even talked about options for getting it off, we're actually gonna take this log off and I wanna show you the next configuration of the Multilander. In this configuration, we're actually gonna use the utility box as the ramp, and we're gonna use this fixed hook on the boom to fix an angle, and then use the winch to go out and retrieve stuff from behind the trailer. Locking pin's gotta come out. Once I get high enough, the rotating boom will actually let me push it underneath. And then I lower down into the hook. This is when I would take the rope out to the back of the trailer and I'd be able to tie it onto uh, again, a log, if I wanted to fashion a ramp, uh, this ends up being about 12 inches off the ground if you're on a flat surface. Um, but yeah, I could either draw a log up in, I could use this uh, to draw a big game up uh, and get stuff out of the forest or out of the fields with my trailer. I hope you found this video informative. I really tried to go through the design details as well as the various configurations that I think make the Multilander unique in our industry. Thank you for watching. This has been Josh with Woodland Mills.